Hi, my name is Mr. Anger, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the ACE Geometry PACE course. Um, I have a few students in our Christian school who are going through this course this year, and so I'm going to uh, kind of keep tabs on where they're hitting some difficulties, and I'm also hoping to get input from some other students via the PACE Success website and uh, put together some helps uh, throughout this course. But I want to, this first video, I just want to kind of talk with you about, um, this is like a little pep talk that I have with all of my students who are going through the geometry course for the first time. Uh, hopefully the only time through geometry, okay, not just the first time, but when they first start the course is what I meant to say. And I'd really like for parents to listen to this introduction as well. Uh, so this isn't geared just for the teens going through here, but for parents as well, all right? So sometimes students wonder, why do I have to do geometry? You know, there's, it just seems like a lot of work, and I'm not going to use that in real life, okay? Um, now, actually, I have a video, a separate video here at the website about why do I have to learn this? And there's some good scientific background to why we learn algebra, geometry, just about anything in school. And I would encourage you to watch that. There's some good... Uh, advice in there, some good tips to help you understand. But geometry in particular is really, really, really important in developing the ability to think logically, okay? A lot of teenagers like to pretend like they're lawyers, you know, with their parents or their supervisor and uh, have a point they want to drive through, you know, and, and make their arguments. Um, a lot of times they're just emotionally based or, well, duh, you can see this, you know. Um, but a real lawyer has to take known facts, information that's given, observations, and prove every little step, okay, to come to a solid conclusion. And uh, that's one of the things we're going to really develop as we move through a geometry course is logical thinking. Sometimes it's going to seem painful in that there are things that it's, you look at and you say, well, duh, I can see that. This, this line segment has to be equal to that line segment. But actually, we can't make those kind of assumptions. We have to only take the information that's actually given, okay, and then using some of the postulates and theorems and, and definitions and other things that we're going to learn about in this course, then you can actually develop, okay, well, if this is true, then I know this is true. And if that's true, then I know this is true. And then finally come to your conclusions. Now, we're going to do a lot more with proofs in the later paces, okay? Especially the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, that kind of thing. Some of the later paces bring a little bit of algebra back in, okay, and kind of tie it in with the geometry, and you'll do more calculating, and that will be kind of fun. In this first pace, there's, um, they right away jump in with doing some constructions, all right, so using a protractor, um, rather, I keep calling it a protractor, using a compass to uh, make um, angles and bisect angles and that kind of a thing. The paces give a pretty good explanation and diagrams of how to do those constructions. I've not generally, I don't think my students have had a lot of trouble with that. If you do get stuck, I know there are a lot of good videos that you can just search on YouTube or if you go to Khan Academy, uh, K-H-A-N I believe it's spelled, and uh, search for the geometry section and the particular construction you're trying to do. He'll actually demonstrate all the steps involved in doing that. Uh, just a couple other introductory things that I want to mention before we get into some specific problems. Um, each pace is going to have one of these. It is a, it's in the middle of the pace. It's called a geometry handbook. Um, I'm borrowing this from a student of mine who just finished this first pace, and he did a great job of filling it all in. It's much better to do it as you're working through the pace, okay? So at each checkup, you should have some of it done before you move on. Don't wait until you get to the end and try to do the whole thing. That really is not a good, a good study technique. A lot of these you will have to have memorized, even if you don't have to write it out word for word, you have to know it well enough to fill in blanks. And some of them that you use a lot, you will memorize and repeat them word for word. 
There are symbols here at the bottom <clears throat> of the back of the, of the sheets that are important to know. And then when you turn the old pace, when you turn the pace in, when you're done, don't turn in the handbook. Hold on to that. And in fact, you might even want to put holes in it and put it in a notebook and just keep all of them, okay? This will be a very, a very valuable tool. I have had a couple of students who didn't want to handwrite the whole thing and they wanted to type it up. And I'm fine with that. You know, keep it in a document that you can print out and uh, put in a notebook, show your supervisor, that's fine, okay? You want it to be legible and easy to go back and reference. You'll find that really important as we move into the second, third, and fourth paces um, that you need to have that. One more thing I want to mention here. As you're going through the, um, through the first pace already, you're going to be doing, like I said, some constructions, creating angles, bisecting angles, bisecting line segments, that kind of a thing. And you need to have a compass. Um, the cheap plastic compasses are usually not very good, okay? Um, this one's pretty cheap. The only thing I like about it is you can put a regular pencil in, um, but a lot of them are so, so flimsy that if you just kind of shake it, it'll move. You can't have that, all right? To do this accurately, you really need to make sure that your compass is going to be tight, all right? So that it's difficult to pull these apart. And once you get a certain distance apart, you know it's going to stay that distance. Very important. So this one's kind of chintzy. Um, I actually kind of like one this size because it's much easier to manipulate. Very important to have a pin, okay? A little metal pin on one end. And this one, what I really like is that it has um, just a pencil lead, you know, a replaceable pencil lead rather than a pencil that you have to take out and sharpen. This is another one. This one's kind of small. This one's kind of fun. It has a metal point here and a pencil lead here. And then this can be rolled back and forth to uh, spread these apart, although this particular one is broken, but I like that model. And then uh, this is another model. It's a little bigger, but the fact that it's metal and you can replace the pencil lead, sharp, take it out, sharpen it, put it back in. And again, you have a metal point here. All right, point number two. Point number two about the protractors is you always want the pencil lead and the tip to be at the same level, okay? So you want it level, you don't want one pushed up higher than the other one. Number two, is you always want the pencil lead to be extremely sharp. I would recommend finding a way to sharpen it like every day, every other day, if, you're, if it's this type, and uh, you have a pencil in there, take it out and sharpen it, okay? Or move the pencil to make sure you have a sharp point. If it gets dull, you're, you're not gonna be able to do the constructions correctly and it's gonna be a mess, all right? <clears throat> Here's the third thing I wanna point out, and I, I guess I'll use this one. Um, I the one thing I forgot to bring with me, and I should have, is to have a straight edge, okay, a ruler. Um, and then this room that I'm in, I don't see one laying around. Do not do what I'm doing. When you are doing these constructions, do not just by hand go like that and say, okay, I have a line, all right? Use a ruler. Use, you can take a three by five card, all right? And uh, you can use the edge of a 3x5 card. You can take a piece of scrap paper and fold it in half, okay? And then you have a nice straight edge, or certainly a ruler. Six inch ruler is a good size to have. So let's say you, you're gonna do something with this. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it straighter, all right? Now a lot of times they'll say to make an arc using the compass. And so I like to just get whatever set distance you want and then you put the, the uh, point, not the pencil, but the other point, on the very end, and then sweep an arc, all right? And when you do that, it's going to make a very thin arc. You want it to be as thin as possible. You want it to be looking like it's a, I always tell my students, make it look like it's an eyelash laying on the paper, just, just so, so thin. You don't want to go back and forth with your marker like that. All right, 
And if you have, I mean, with your, um, with your pencil. And if you have a dull pencil, that's what it's gonna look like. And it's, you're not gonna be able to be accurate. So make sure it's just a very thin pencil line. And then later you're gonna have to come back and do another little arc, maybe there. And you want that point where they meet to be very, very, very obvious, very fine point, very fine lines touching each other. And then you can take that point and connect it to the end, use your ruler, all right? So that you have two points and then you can connect it and have a nice straight line. Be accurate, okay? Do not give in to the temptation to be sloppy and lazy in geometry, all right? This is a, uh, there's an art to it, but part of that art is a very exacting thing of using the, the compass and uh, using a straight edge, and basically that's all we're gonna do. There's, you're gonna be amazed at uh, all the different shapes that you can form using just those two tools. But uh, those two things are very important. This needs to not be flying back and forth. Pencil lead needs to always be sharp, all right? And to make sure you use a straight edge when you do that. <clears throat> I think those are the main things I wanted to mention. Oh, I did wanna mention while I have the parents hopefully watching this video, is as we go through this course, and there are, con there are the, uh, the various um, proofs the students have to do, even if geometry is not your thing, okay, we have to kind of, uh, it's, t it's tough, okay? On the one hand, you wanna hold them to, this is what the score key says, you need to get this exact answer. On the other hand, there might be some flexibility or sometimes the order of the steps can vary and it might still be the correct answer. But generally speaking, if you're, if you're not confident that they really know what they're doing and they explained it to you well and they're not just guessing, I, I would say they need to match the score key. Secondly, parents and supervisors, I, I know we don't want students copying from the score key. All right, that would be cheating. Um, and in all the other courses, we don't let them sit down at a table with an open score key and um, their, their pace and just be looking at the score key, looking at the pace and writing it. And, we, and we're not encouraging that in geometry. But especially as you get into some of the more difficult proofs and there's a lot of steps involved, especially if they have to do the whole thing on their own, it might not be a bad idea to allow them, if they're stuck, okay, not for every problem, this is not a but it can be a helpful tool. If they're stuck, say, why don't you go ahead, sit down at the score key and look at that, but not with your pencil. And see in the score key how they did it, what steps they followed, okay? See what you're missing, and then go back and do it on your own, okay? And sometimes it just helps having that little extra oomph to get over a hump and then be able to finish that proof. And, and it's challenging. This is definitely a challenging course and some of the problems much more so than others. Uh, I will end with this encouragement though. The, as hard as a pace may be, the test does seem to be a little easier. They emphasize only the things that were really drilled through the pace and the test proofs are not nearly as hard as some of the ones that you will have to do in the pace. So take heart, don't get discouraged, all right? Push through it, learn everything you can, and uh, study hard for your tests, and I think you will be successful in this course.